all right so welcome back and thank you i've been getting much requests for videos and so on and i th and i would like also to thank those who have subscribed to this channel all right so today i'll be looking at coral reefs under the following objectives define the term corals describe the different types of corals look at the conditions necessary for their formation and also to discuss the importance of coral reefs so coral reefs now what are coral reefs coral reefs form one of the most complex and intriguing ecosystem of the earth these are large structures that are created naturally and is also one of the oldest ecosystem in the world corals are small animals often called polyps and they have tiny tentacles for the purpose of feeding from microscopic planktons each polyp lives behind a calcareous skeleton when they die this grows the reef throughout its lifetime and coral reefs have different types of shapes which include spherical star shape and pillar shape corals now let's look at the conditions necessary for their formation so they are really five main conditions which are often quoted as necessary for their growth so where we corals tend to develop in areas where the temperature is right what is right temperature between 25 and 27 degrees celsius right why is this temperature ideal corals are very sensitive and cold water will slow the growth of corals and if the water is too warm it will bleach the coral which will eventually kill them so the water can't be too cold and it can't be too warm then the next condition is sunlight sunlight is important as corals have plant-like features so they photosynthesize in order for this process to occur sunlight is critical why coral needs sunlight you may still wonder remember earlier i said coral has plant-like features well, this plant-like feature, plant -like feature is actually a microscopic plant, which is called a zooxanthellae. Corals feed to make their food, all right? These microscopic plants live in the tissues of the coral polyps, where they get nutrients and protection. In exchange, the coral has a ready supply of food. So it's a type of symbiotic relationship. They live in the coral and they get nutrients and protection and at the same time providing food for the coral because it breaks down anything and provides food for the coral. Then the next condition is clean, clear and well oxygenated water. Sunlight is needed for coral growth, right? sunlight don't penetrate dirty water so therefore clean and clear water is important so that the sun can penetrate the water and allow the process of photosynthesis to continue right water with sediments and 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 and, and what that is murk murky does not allow coral growth First, sediments will choke the coral, and choke corals die. Hence, they won't survive in areas with much sediments. Oxygenated water now. Why? Corals actually breathe. So they need water with oxygen so that they can breathe. So therefore, that is why oxygenated water is important. The next condition is that coral require depths between 20 and 40 meters. This allows for the penetration of sunlight. And also, the deeper you go as it relates to water, the cooler it gets. So therefore, if you are 
60 meters underwater, it is colder than if you were 30 meters under. So this depth provides the ideal 25, 27 degrees Celsius temperature that coral needs. Coral also require salinity for survival. Coral reefs love salt water. Therefore, you will find them where the river, you will not rather, you will not find them where the river meets the sea. Additionally, water movements, so they, they like still water, they don't like turbulent water, water that keeps moving, right? So you won't find coral reefs in, in areas of the sea where the water is very turbulent. Turbulent meaning the water is not calm, it keeps moving. You won't find them there. So at an area where the river meets the sea, you won't find coral reefs there. Why? One, at an area where the river meets the sea, a lot of sediment dumping is taking place. And remember, we said that sediments choke the coral. Two, the water is not clear at that side because uh, uh, where the water is not clear where the river meets the sea. So you won't find coral there. Secondly, the water is not doesn't have enough salt in it where the river meets the sea and if and that fresh water will kill the coral of a sickness that affects coral called freshwater poisoning now we're going to be looking at different types of coral reefs i will start in start as i'll start with the fringing reefs so the fringing reef is the most common type of reef which are found in the caribbean right and these reef lies very close to the shore. And the water between the reef and the shore is normally shallow. So if you look at this image here, you see this little white here. This is the reef, right? And you realize there's a little water lagoon right between this area right here. You can actually walk out on this area. That's a fringing reef right fringing reefs normally they are so close to the, the coast the shore that they give the impression that they are attached to the coastline we tend to find many fringing reefs in the caribbean and especially when we talk specifically about jamaica our north coast is characterized by fringing reef then our next type of reef is the barrier reef. So you have heard about the Great Barrier Reef before, right? Which is in Australia. So a barrier reef, this reef lies a little further away from the shoreline and is separated from the land by a deep water lagoon. So you wouldn't be able to walk out on this reef. You would have to swim across this reef, swim from the land to the to the to the barrier reef, right? This reef tends to grow parallel to the coastline, but is separated from it by a lagoon. The lagoon will develop between the fringe reef and the land, right? Barrier reefs can also originate off offshore. If the depth of the seabed out there is shallow enough to allow corals to grow so it can develop further offshore so the reason why we see reefs so close to our coastline especially when we speak about the fringing reefs the fringing reef and the barrier reef is because close to if when you go to the beach you realize you can walk for some distance in the water before you become completely covered so the water close to the coastline is normally shallow hence allowing coral reef growth to develop atolls this type of reef formation is not really common in the caribbean but atolls are circular roughly circular and travel around a deep lagoon they are most common in the india pacific region where over 300 atolls are formed that's a mistake. All right, importance of coral reefs now. So coral reefs are very important to Caribbean, especially when we speak about Caribbean economy because Caribbean islands depend on 
fisheries yes fishing industry is a big thing in for example belize and we talk about jamaica and other caribbean islands and most of all tourism this is a major economic activity for a lot of the caribbean territories so you can see from that that coral reef provide a lot of support for our economy in the caribbean hence they are very important coral reefs also provide environmental significance as they help to ensure biodiversity and also helps with coral protection all right critical so as it relates to economy now coral reefs um provides as um like for example sport adventures like snorkeling and diving for those persons who travel from wide and far to the caribbean to explore our coral reefs additionally coral reefs help with the um sand sand on the beaches which are used mainly by caribbean hotels so you can now see the significance of coral reef as it relates to the tourist sector people travel just to come to the caribbean island to explore the beautiful coral reefs and people tend to come to the caribbean for our beaches and coral reef protects our beaches and they are also they, prof they also help in beach building for fisheries now coral reefs act as a protection and a nursery especially for shellfish so it protect the juvenile fishes from the big blue deep ocean so that the larger mature fish won't eat them so therefore it allows their survival and increase the fish population as it relates and it and, and it does this by contributing to biodiversity because if the younger fishes are able to survive to grow and into mature fish fish they will contribute to the pop to the ocean's diversity biodiversity coral reef as a coastal protection now coral reef provide coastal protection in times of hurricanes so you know when we have those hurricanes and those big strong winds and those that produce those big storm surges the coral reef act as a barrier so what it does is that it helps to break these big waves hence protecting the coastline if it wasn't for the coral reefs these waves would destroy the coastline during a hurricane and by extension even without the hurricane season coral reefs helps to break the waves hence limiting the impact of wave erosion on our coastline because when we talk about physical geography it's a cycle the waves come in and they take away sediments from off the coastline and then they return the sediments. However, if we didn't have coral reef, these big giant waves would just come in and just eat all the sand off the beach. So what the corals, what the coral reef does is break the wave and limit the force. So it causes less sediments to be taken from the coastline. I am going to encourage you to join me for part two of this video where I'll be looking at the threat to coral reefs. So we've explored their importance and in the next video, I'll explore the threat to coral reefs. Thanks for listening and please subscribe. Have a wonderful day.